Hi everyone! Welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Raz and in this video, we will discuss how to compute income tax for an individual taxpayer who is single and who is purely earning compensation income. So if you're ready, let's start! we jump into our discussion let us first identify who is an individual taxpayer so it is said that an individual taxpayer is a natural born person who is subject to Philippine taxation and who is obligated to pay taxes so this means that an individual taxpayer is you me or other persons who are naturally born and who are subject to Philippine taxation there are different types of individual taxpayers and we have discussed already the five of them in our other video lectures and as sort of recap we have the resident citizen the non-resident citizen resident aliens non-resident aliens engaged in trade or business and a non-resident alien not engaged in trade or business so among the five individual taxpayers one of them is subject to a fixed final rate of 25 percent and that is the non-resident aliens not engaged in trade or business while the four of them the resident citizen the non-resident citizen resident aliens and non-resident aliens engaged in trade or business are subject to graduated rates so we will discuss in this video how to compute income tax using the graduated rates and of course the other eight percent optional rate for qualified individual taxpayers so when an individual taxpayer considered single it is said that a taxpayer is considered single if he or she is unmarried. So even if you have boyfriends or girlfriends, still you are considered a single. Okay? Unless you are married, you are legally married, then you are still considered a single individual taxpayers. So next question would be, what does purely earning compensation mean? So again, in this video, our focus is an individual taxpayer who is single and who is purely earning compensation so when we say purely earning compensation this means that the source of income of the individual taxpayer is his or her employment only either with one or more employers meaning he is or she is an employee whether rank and file or managerial or supervisorial or whether having one employer only or two or more employers as long as the source of income is derived from employment then that employee is considered or that taxpayer is considered as purely earning compensation so again we will focus our discussion to those individual taxpayers who are purely earning compensation compensation income includes the regular basic salary this is the monthly fixed rate that an employee will receive or the minimum wage if the employee is paid on a minimum wage basis compensation incomes also include overtime pay for every excess in overtime work and also holiday pay night shift differential if you are required to work by night and hazard pay if your work involves a hazardous work and of course 13th month pay by the way the 13th month pays some notary compensation meaning the employers are really required by the law to give their employees their 13th month pay which is equivalent to their one month salary and this 13th month pay should be given not later than december 24 of every year also other bonuses french benefits if this is not subject to french benefit tax and also such other remuneration derived from employment it can be allowances and incentives or so on those are just some of the examples or inclusions of a compensation income there can be a lot of types of compensation income that the employer would want to give to his or her employees and these are just some of them so as long as this income is derived from employment the basis why the employee receive this kind of income is because he is employed to that employer then that is considered as compensation income 
and that is subject to tax again if it is not exempted it is taxable general rule okay always remember that so we have here a performa computation of the tax so when you say performa this means this is the formula or the, the template so we have here we will first have the compensation income this is the basic pay when we say gross amount this is the amount the figure which is before deducting anything and then we will add the overtime pay night shift differential holiday pay and other fees received and of course fees commissions incentives and other fixed allowances which form part of the basic compensation income of the employee and also we will add the other non-taxable remuneration arising from employment such as 13th one pay and other benefits and de minimis by the way take note that this performal computation is based on the itr required by the bureau of internal revenue so we will still add those non-taxable items although they are non-taxable but we need to add those non-taxable compensation income to get that total compensation income when we say total compensation income this means that includes both taxable and non-taxable portion then after we have computed that total compensation income we can now deduct the non-taxable compensation so after we add the non-taxable compensation we will later again deduct the non-taxable compensation so we have the minimis we will deduct that and we also have the 13th month in other benefits subject to the limit of 90,000 pesos so that is the limit so any de minimis which is not beyond their limit their individual limit they are all deductible because they are non-taxable and any excess of those de minimis beyond their individual limits we will add those here in the other benefits okay if it, he is a rank and file and then we will subject that to 90,000 limit then if the total 13 month pay and other benefits is not beyond 90,000 then we will deduct those amount in full but if the amount the total amount of 13 month pay and other benefits exceed 90,000 pesos then we can only deduct the 90,000 pesos okay later i will show you how to compute the 13th month pay and other benefits subject to the limit of 90,000 pesos in our two illustrations. So, we will also deduct the SS, Feel Health, and Pag-ibig contributions. But remember, this SSS, Feel Health, and Pag-ibig contributions pertain to the contributions of the employee, okay, not of the employer. We will also deduct the union dues if there are any union dues, okay. And then, by the way, when you say union dues, these are the payment to organizations within the company. Union dues. The, uh, usually, there is a union organization, labor union within the organization, and then they will pay a membership or an annual due. Okay, so that is also non taxable, and we will deduct that from our total compensation income. Then, after we have these four items, we will deduct them all together from our total compensation income to get the taxable income okay so and from then we will we can now subject that to income tax so this taxable income is now our, is now our basis for computing our income tax so what is the applicable income tax for those individuals who are purely earning compensation income the answer is only graduated rates remember there are two income tax for individual taxpayers the default rates is the graduated rates the other one is eight percent optional rate but in this case the eight percent optional rate will not apply always remember if you are an individual taxpayer who is employed who is an employee who is earning incomes from compensation who has no other source of income who has no business who is not practicing profession who is solely earning compensation your tax is the graduated rates 
and the graduated rates is this okay so this is the graduated rates an individual taxpayer except non-resident alien not engaged in trader business so again when we say non-resident alien not engaged in trader business their tax is only 25 percent final tax okay all their incomes will be subject to 25 percent final tax except nra not engaged in trader business meaning you are a resident citizen or non-resident citizen or resident alien or non-resident alien engaged in trader business your tax will be graduated rates if you are purely earning compensation income here in the philippines okay this is called graduated rates because the tax rates are graduated it's gradual it's increasing if you notice it is said that for taxable income which is not over 250,000 pesos meaning taxable income is 250,000 pesos and below the tax due is zero there is no tax but if the income the taxable income is over 250 but not over 400 the tax due is 20 percent of the excess over 200 fifty thousand pesos so if your income if the taxable income is three hundred thousand pesos then three hundred thousand pesos less minus two hundred fifty thousand pesos that's fifty thousand pesos times twenty percent the fifty thousand pesos excess will be multiplied by twenty percent but it is said also that if the taxable income is is over four hundred thousand but not over eight hundred thousand, the tax due is thirty thousand pesos plus twenty five percent of the excess over four hundred thousand pesos, and so on. And by the way, this is this graduated rate is effective from January 1, 2018 through December 31, 2022 because we would have another graduated rates which is effective on January 1, 2023 which I will not cover yet in this video because it is not yet applicable. So let us have an illustration for a single individual taxpayer with one employer only. So we have here one single and a rank and file employee of ABC company and he had the following information during the year 2020. So he received compensation income, which is net of 40,000 pesos for the social security system, field health, and HDMF or Pag-ibig contributions. And of course, this amount is also net of 13,000 withholding tax. So the amount here is net of the two items. So this 420,000 is net of 40,000 and also 13,000. And he also received allowances and commissions worth 50,000 pesos and 13th month pay worth 30,000 pesos and productivity bonus worth 30,000 pesos and also French benefits and other benefits which is 35,000 pesos. Juan also paid premiums on his personal health insurance from Sun Life taken by him and that is 2,400 per year. Okay. Also, Juan presented his personal family and living expenses which is 200,000 pesos so before we jump into the solution let's first analyze this problem so we are given 420,000 this amount is net of 40,000 contributions and 13,000 withholding taxes and also allowances and commissions so as we have discussed in our other videos when the allowance is fixed okay it is always part of the compensation income therefore subject to regular income tax and that is the graduated rates we also have 13th month pay and other bonuses so we have here productivity bonus and french benefits remember who one here is rank and file therefore this french benefit is not subject to french benefit tax but rather this French benefit and other benefits will be subject to the 90,000 pesos limit. So we will add the 13th month pay 
productivity bonus and this French benefit together to subject all those all these three amount to 90,000 limit. And we have also have here premiums paid on health insurance, which as we have discussed in our performa tax competition, this is non-deductible. This is a personal expense of one and therefore not non-deductible. Okay. We are also given personal family and living expenses. Again, this is a personal expense of one. Remember who one is not a businessman. Juan is a compensation income earner. He is a purely compensation income earner. Therefore, he cannot be allowed to deduct expenses. Okay? Because as we have discussed in our other videos about allowable deductions, expenses can only be deducted if the expenses are connected to the taxpayer's trade or business and in this case Juan is not a businessman Juan is an employee therefore we cannot deduct any expenses I hope that is very clear okay so let's jump into the solution so our solution would have first the gross compensation income of 473 how come do we have 473 from 420 we will add the 40,000 contributions and of course the 13,000 holding taxes again we need to add back those two amounts because we need to compute for the gross amount and the 420,000 is already net so we need to add them back to our gross compensation income then we will also add the allowances and commissions and also the 13th month pay and productivity bonus and French benefits. Remember, these three items are non-taxable but only to the extent of 90,000 pesos. And in our pro forma tax computation, based on the ITR required by the BR, we need to add those non-taxable items even though they are non-taxable we need to add them to our taxable compensation to get the total gross compensation income which is both taxable and non-taxable okay later on these three items will be deducted in the lower part okay and you should not panic because these items will later be deducted okay we just need to to determine how much is a total compensation income of one both taxable and non-taxable so after we get the total gross compensation income we can now deduct the allowed deductions and the exemptions so as i have said we have three items the 13th one thing the productivity bonus and the french benefits we will add them together and we will get ninety-five thousand pesos but remember that the exempted the exemption limit is only 90,000 pesos okay therefore we can only deduct the 90,000 pesos you might be asking why should we deduct this 90,000 from our 618 gross compensation why because that 95,000 this amount is already here okay this 95,000, the 13th month pay, productivity bonus, French benefits, and other benefits is are already added in the total gross compensation, which is both taxable and non-taxable. Therefore, we will deduct the 90,000 pesos, the limit, because that is the exemption limit. So meaning the other 5,000 here, the excess 5,000, cannot be deducted here it remains in the gross compensation income okay and then we will deduct the ss field health and pag ibig contributions and that is 40,000 pesos remember that we added this amount in the gross compensation income that's why i told you we need to add first those items deducted that we holding taxes and the contributions to get the gross compensation because anyway in the lower part we will deduct that amount 
okay so hence our total taxable income for Hawaiian is 488,000 pesos so it might be confusing to you following this formula but actually we have an alternative solution which will be easier okay and here is the alternative solution we so first we have the gross compensation income like what we have in our other solution that's 473,000 pesos then we will add the allowances and commissions and of course we will add the taxable excess take note of this in this alternative solution we will just add the taxable excess of 13th month pay and other benefits and what are those items the 13th month pay of 30,000 pesos the productivity bonus and French benefits and other benefits a total of 95,000 pesos and from then we will determine how much is the taxable excess so the limit is only 90,000 pesos that is the exemption limit so we will have a taxable excess of 5,000 pesos so that 5,000 pesos is the the excess of total 13 point pin other benefits over the 90,000 exemption limit so therefore our gross compensation income subject take note the label here is not total gross compensation rather gross compensation income subject to tax because this 528 is just purely or alone the taxable component because we have not added the non-taxable component unlike in the other solution and we will deduct of course the ss phil health and pagibig contributions which is 40,000 pesos to get the taxable income of 488,000 pesos which is actually the same with our other solution so you might choose which solution would you prefer but our income tax return prefers the first solution but this one is a lot easier and simplified to compute okay it's your choice anyway since we have already computed the taxable income we can now compute the income tax so how do we compute income tax actually after you have computed the taxable income the income tax computation is a lot easier okay so we have the taxable income of 488,000 pesos and we will refer to the graduated rates table so we will look for which bracket will the 488,000 pesos fall so from this figure from this table it's here okay so it's over 400,000 pesos but not over 800,000 pesos and the tax due should be 30,000 pesos plus 25% of the excess over 400,000 pesos so again you will first consider taxable income look for this amount here in the left column and since this amount is 488,000 it is over it is beyond 400,000 but not beyond 800,000 so if your taxable income is 1 million you should be looking here that's over 800 but not over 2 million if the taxable income is 5 million then you should be looking for here over 2 million but not over 8 million if your taxable income is 210 then you should be looking here okay and look for the corresponding tax due so the tax due it is said that for taxable income over 400,000 but not over 800,000 the tax due is 30,000 pesos plus 25% over 400,000 pesos so here's the computation so the tax due on the taxable income on the first 400,000 taxable income is 30,000 pesos and the tax due on excess which is 488 minus 400 okay so times so that's 88,000 pesos times 25 percent that is 22,000 pesos okay that's it and we will get the total tax due of 52,000 pesos and 
this is just the total tax due. When I say total tax due, this is a total income tax that should be paid by the taxpayer. But remember that the employer of Juan already deducted a creditable withholding tax, a withholding tax that withholding tax of 13,000 is actually an advance payment. So therefore, this 52,000 will be reduced by the amount equivalent to the withholding tax, which is 13,000 pesos. Therefore, the income tax due and payable of Juan is just 39,000 pesos. That's it. When we say tax due or income tax due, that means that is the total amount that should have been paid by Juan. Okay, but when we say income tax due and payable, meaning that is the remaining balance of the tax due that should have been paid, that is considered the remaining balance because we have reduced the tax due by the withholding taxes already paid by the taxpayer. Okay, so in this case, even though the tax should have been 52,000 pesos, Juan will now just pay 39,000 pesos. Okay, that's it. That is how we compute income tax for individual taxpayer who is single and who is earning purely compensation income from one employer only. Now let's have an illustration for individual taxpayer who is single but with two or more employers. Juan is an accountant of ABC Company and at the same time a part-time college instructor at the Brighton University. For the year 2020, he had the following information. So Juan is having a full-time job at ABC Company at the same time, a part-time job as an instructor at Bright University. We have here information data from ABC Company and Bright University. So Juan received gross basic pay, which is annualized, from ABC Company that is that is 540,000 and from Bright University that is 252,000 pesos. And also Juan received monthly allowances which we can say a fixed because it's monthly. So from ABC company that is 60,000 pesos and from Bright University that is 30,000 pesos. He also received holiday and overtime pay from ABC company that is 5,000 and withholding taxes deducted that is 25,800 from ABC and Bright University respectively. And also 13th month pay from ABC company which is 45,000 and from Bright University that is 21,000 pesos. And also Juan received mid-year bonus from ABC company that is 30,000 pesos and productivity incentives under CBA which is by the way the minimis if you can still recall in our discussion about productivity incentives under CBA okay that is from Bright University which, equi which amounts to 15,000 pesos. And also, Juan has contribution uh, for SS, Phil Health, and Pag Ibig, and that is 15,000 from ABC Company, and for Bright University, that is 7,200. So, we are going to compute for the taxable income of Juan for both ABC Company and Bright University, and of course, the tax due for these incomes. So, Juan here is purely earning compensation. His incomes are purely derived from employment, but in this case, Juan has two employers. Okay, actually, it can be, it can be possible. You are working in one company at the same time in another company as a part-time instructor, especially if you are professional and your service really needed. Like when you are a CPA or a lawyer or an engineer, you can be working as an engineer, accountant, or a lawyer at the same time. You can have, you can teach for on parts and basis so like what i do like what i'm doing actually in this case we will add all those incomes together we will add them because we cannot separate these incomes because in a way there is only one taxpayer and that is one so we will add those incomes together and when it comes to the limitations the ninety thousand limitations we will have only one limitation and that is ninety thousand pesos okay and also we are given here personal family and living expenses amounting to 200,000 pesos which is actually non-deductible because as we know expenses can never be deducted for an employee. So our solution would be we have here for, for ABC company and Bright University and the total 
So we have the gross basic pay, we have 540 in 2052. So the total is 792,000 pesos. Again, we will add them together to get the total amount, okay? And then the monthly allowances. So this is fixed because it is monthly. So that is 60 plus 30. So we have a total of 90,000 pesos. We also have holiday and overtime pay that is 5,000. By the way, these amounts are all taxable, okay? These three items. This holiday and overtime pay can only be non-taxable if the recipient, if the taxpayer is a minimum wage earner, which Juan is not a minimum wage earner. We also have 13th one pay. And so again, we are using the first solution first. So we will add them together, 45 plus 21 to get the total amount of 66,000 pesos. And we will also add the mid-year bonus, which is 30,000 pesos. And then productivity incentives under CBA. By the way, again, this is a de minimis amount to the extent only of 10,000. That is the exemption limit. And the excess of that will be added to the 90,000 pesos limit. So the total amount, the total gross compensation income, which is both taxable and non-taxable, is equivalent to 998,000 pesos. And then we will deduct the 13th month pay. That is 45 plus 21. So we have 66,000 pesos. And we also have mid-year bonus. That is also 30,000 pesos. And productivity incentives. Again, this is a de minimis amount and is exempted to the extent of 10,000. So the first 10,000 pesos here will be deducted automatically because that is non-taxable but the excess the 15 minus 10 the excess of 5000 since this is taxable because this is beyond the exemption limit so we will add this 5000 to or the 13th one pay and other benefits so we will get a total of 101000 pesos but remember the exemption limit is only 90,000 pesos. So therefore, we can only deduct to the extent of 90,000 pesos. So you might be asking, why do we deduct 90,000 only? Why not 101? Because remember, the 66 is already here. Okay? And the 30,000 also is already here. And the 15 is also here. Therefore, I will first deduct the 10,000 because this is the de minimis and the excess of that, the 5,000 plus 30,000 plus 66,000, a total of 101,000 pesos subject to the limit. And that is 90,000 pesos. Therefore, there is still 11,000 pesos which is subject to tax. Okay? And we will also deduct the SS, Feel Health and Pag-ibig, that is 15,000 from ABC company and Bright University, that is two, that is seven thousand two hundred, a total of twenty-two thousand two hundred. So, the taxable income of one having two employers will be eight hundred seventy-five thousand eight hundred. You might be asking, there are two employers, but why is that one can only deduct one ninety thousand pesos? Because again, we are talking of deduction. We are talking of exemption. And the exemption limit of 90,000 pesos is available only per employee, per taxpayer, not per employer. So whether Juan has two or more or three or four employers, Juan can only deduct a total of 90,000 pesos exemption limit. It is not if you are having three employers, you can also deduct three 90,000 pesos. No, it's not like that. Okay? You can only deduct one ninety thousand pesos as an exemption limit that's why we need to add them together to aggregate them so we can deduct the entire exemption limit and that is ninety thousand pesos okay however if you are quite confused of this solution we also have another alternative solution so again we have here you will add them still together so we have gross basic pay, same amount, same amount. But in the next pay, 
in, in the next item, we have the excess of the 13th month pay and other benefits. So for ABC company, we have 45,000 pesos. And for Bright University, that is 21,000 pesos, a total of 66,000 pesos, okay? We also have mid-year bonus and of course, productivity incentives. As I've said, the first 10,000 is non-taxable. That is a de minimis amount, exemption limit, productivity incentives under collective bargaining agreement okay so 15,000 minus 10,000 that is 5,000 that is a taxable excess okay and we don't have to add this amount here okay we should not in this alternative solution we should not add this 10,000 here okay if you're watching your screen so now the total 13th month pay and other benefits is 101,000 pesos and the limit is only 90,000 pesos. Therefore, there is a taxable excess of 13th month pay and other benefits beyond or over the limit of 90,000 pesos that is 11,000 pesos. So we will add these amounts together, the 792,000 pesos, the 90,000 pesos, the 5,000 pesos and 11,000 pesos, a total of gross compensation income subject to tax, and that is 898,000 pesos. And from then, we will deduct the SS Feel Health and Pagibig contributions, and that is 22,200. Okay, and to get the total taxable amount of 875,800. So, either solution we get the same amount of taxable income so you choose which solution is more preferable to you or easier for you because for me if i'm a student i will be using this alternative solution but since i'm working as an accountant so i'll be using the first alternative the first solution because that is how it should be in an actual practice okay but for your students maybe you can use this solution so after we get the taxable income, we can now we are now ready to compute the income tax. So again, we will follow the same steps in our previous illustration. We have here the taxable income and we will look for the bracket on which this income falls. So it is 875,000, therefore this amount falls here in the fourth Row. that is over 800,000 but not over 2 million and the tax due there is 130,000 plus 30% 30 of the excess over 800. The tax due is computed as for the first 800,000 the tax due is 130,000 pesos. Look at this. Okay, so this is the tax due if the taxable income is 800,000 pesos and in excess of that, that is 875 minus 800,000, so times 30%, that is 22,500, a total of 152,500. So that is now our total tax due that should have been paid by Juan. However, remember that ABC Company and Bright University withheld taxes or deducted taxes from Juan's compensation income that or those were an advance payment. So we can deduct those withholding taxes from Juan's tax due and that is 33,000 pesos. So Juan, instead of paying 152,500, Juan will just now pay 119,500 pesos. That is the income tax due and payable of Juan. So that's it. It's very easy. It's actually it's actually simple to compute. The only complication there is when you don't know how to compute the taxable income because the income tax computation is actually very simple. I hope by now you have mastered how to compute taxable income from our previous lectures. So Thank you so much for watching and I hope you learned a lot from this video.